hello and welcome um, to your exam technique for Route A, uh, Unit 2. Um, I'm assuming, well, you, you would have done the um, one exam now, so let's try and go through this as quickly as possible, uh, which will give you more time for revision. Um, just moving on, this is for... Um, the transition of Russia between 1905 and 1924. So I'm just going to give you part one of this, and then we will um, you'll, you'll be able to find part two um, in the next video that will be posted. Okay, so let's just go through this. Okay, before we begin, just remember to decode um, every question, read it carefully, and consider it. Okay. Um, answer what the question wants you to answer. Don't deviate, okay? You're wasting ink and you're wasting time. So if I just move on, um, you you guys would have known this by now. I would have talked about it in, um, or really sort of reinforced this in other videos that I posted. Um, explanation, description, and your, your evaluation questions will all be present in, the, in this paper. Um, so I'm think I can um, move safely on there rather than repeat myself and draw this lecture or this 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 presentation or video rather out um, so what is unit two it is a different paper from unit one there's not going to be as many sources uh, I think there's only two on this paper but we'll go through them okay I'm going to be using um, examples from the Hodder uh, history book. Um, you can use a specimen paper by all means, but again, we don't know what questions are going to come up on that, that exam paper. So the more you revise, the more you'll be able um, to tackle those questions. As I said, this is more exam technique, so we will stick to that. So what is Unit 2? Um, unit 2 is a study in depth focusing on key features and key concepts of history. Okay, The exam paper will test your knowledge and understanding through the evaluation of historical sources and interpretations of the past. Not a massive amount of change, however, um, it's worth bearing in mind that, again, if you get the opportunity um, to look at sources, make sure that you you examine those sources and 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 draw out things and then use your own knowledge this is this is a sort of level up rather than just using the sources okay um you'll have to answer all three sections i'll be looking at the first part uh in this video um which test your particular skills it like this one lasts for one hour and 15 minutes okay and i can't emphasize that enough on all questions on the paper have to be answered okay you get a choice in the next paper but not this one the structure of unit two exam questions so quickly going through this again you'll be hit with question 1a that's going to be worth three marks use of source material and all knowledge to describe an aspect of history so there will be a source in there uh 1b explanation of a historical development um six marks that's worth one c is a discussion of different viewpoints of an historical development now you you'll start to understand as i go through this the different skills we are asking from you so let's have a look at question one a this is going to begin as you would know the format um of of these exam techniques videos uh the question will start with you source a and your own knowledge to describe okay so straight off they're asking for a little bit more out of you this time okay um so you're gonna have to use source material and your own knowledge to describe an aspect of history so by taking that source material you're gonna have to put that into context from your own knowledge okay that little piece of the jigsaw puzzle you fit it in you build up little jigsaw pieces around that to show your knowledge that's that's all we're really asking there to, to use an analogy um, so you must pick out several facts from the source and its caption um, you must use your own knowledge of this topic area to expand upon what is given in the source. The use of expansion or for you to expand is basically that is that's another word for your own knowledge. OK, you're not seeing something there, um, but you but you're, you're going to mention something which is going to happen or did happen. And that, uh, either side of that source 
then then you really are expanding and using your own knowledge there so we move straight on and here's an example of question 1a as I said, hopefully these will come up and you'll be laughing if you've listened to this, you know, prior to the exam. This is great revision in its very essence to sort of get to um, certain specific parts of Russia in transition. OK, so you source A and your own knowledge to describe Rasputin's influence over the Russian royal family. And this is worth three marks. OK, so source A is a cartoon of 1917 showing Tsar Nicholas and Tsarina Alexandra sitting on the knee of Gregory Rasputin. Okay, I'm sure you're familiar with this or something like that. Um, certainly Rasputin, heck of a character. The answer that's given, okay, is source A shows the Tsar and Tsarina being cared for by Rasputin. Because he's gone into the source and he's pulled out what he is, you know, he's saying what he's seeing there. Okay. Rasputin is portrayed as a large, powerful individual. Yes, we can get that from the source, who appears to be in control of the royal family. Okay, so he's pulling out a few things here from the source. The Tsar and Tsarina had come to rely upon Rasputin to control the blood disorder that their son Alexei suffered from. Now, there's nothing really in there that will tell us that. Okay, so there's own knowledge. Uh, when the Tsar left St. Petersburg in 1915 to direct the war effort from the front, the control of the Russian government was left in the hands of the Tsarina and Rasputin. Many nobles disliked the influence Rasputin held, or had rather, over the royal family. There. Um, you can see from the beginning here, uh, points from the source have been highlighted or recognised. And then from these perhaps two points, further knowledge has been applied um, and, and, and basically um either side of the source as you said think of that as a jigsaw piece puzzle well he's put a piece here by saying to begin with um he was, he was called upon to to um, alleviate the hem hemophilia of alexei and then the other side he talks about that um in 1917, many nobles disliked the influence Rasputin had over the royal family. Okay, it's up to your own knowledge, though. There is no set answer when it comes to filling in those little pieces. My only advice would be that you stick either side if you could. Yeah? So let's continue there. A few hints for question 1A would be... Uh, pick up at least two points from the source, as this will get you one mark for the extraction of... Um, understanding if you will from that source however you will get the bigger marks will be loaded for you expanding and enhancing upon that actual source it just shows your own knowledge and i hope that does make sense so we can move on quickly to question 1b a little sip of tango never helps that uh, never hurts rather uh, and this will be a question of explain why now, there's not going to be um, a source given here, okay? So, but it'll ask you to explain why something happened during this period. And by this period, I, I'm talking about 1905 to 1924 in Russia. Okay, we, you, we would have discussed this in class. Um, so, it's worth six marks. So, what we're going to ask you to do is... This question will be testing your own knowledge. You must aim to give a variety of well-explained reasons, okay? It's asking you why something happened. Um, so just think about, you know, that question is an explanation question, but you want to be talking about why it happened, not how did it happen, the reasons why something happened. So if we just have a look at this, um, the, the, the question I, I've chosen here is explain why revolution broke out in Russia in February 1917. This is worth six marks. So the answer that was given was that the First World War caused extensive economic hardship in Russia. Harsh working conditions resulted in the outbreak of strikes in February 1917, one of the largest being at the Putilov Steelworks. As the strikes grew in number, the Tsar ordered soldiers to break up the demonstrations, which only increased the tension. The severe winter of 1916-17 to 17 had caused food and fuel shortages and resulted in higher food prices and increased rationing. The Tsar and his ministers were blamed for failing to solve these problems. Another cause of discontent was the growing unpopularity of the rule of the Tsarina and her relationship with Rasputin. Many nobles disliked the influence Rasputin exercised over the royal family. 
also, Russia's heavy defeats in the First World War were blamed on the weak leadership of the Tsar, who had moved to the front to take charge of directing Russia's war effort. The high cost of fighting the war, together with the constant drain upon essential supplies, caused growing frustration and hardship within Russia. It was therefore a combination of factors that caused revolution to break out in Russia in February 1917. Boy, this guy knows his stuff. And as you can see there, a lot of knowledge of his own has been added there. He's gone into minute detail. I don't feel you do have to, but if you are listening to this, there's some great points to take um, that, that you can add to your revision notes. Um, but can you see how he's given us the reason why revolution broke out not how it broke out he's coming in at the end and he's telling us um that it was therefore a combination of these factors that caused revolution uh, revolution rather revolution revolution to break out in russia in february 1917 so i hope that makes it clear there um hints for question 1b would be that this question focuses largely upon causation okay what caused something so, e.g., why did something happen? Why did something begin? Or why did something improve? Um, so, I hope that covers it. Um, there, there, there could be others. Uh, how did something end? You know, but um, we're, we're really going to ask um, why something ended up. Okay, so we can see um, a, a, a change there, right? But it, it, it'll be looking at the reason why something happened, not actually looking at the change itself, okay? So, another hint would be questions have been designed to allow candidates to give a range of reasons in their answers. Uh, so that, 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 as you can see, using that example, he puts a lot of factors in there, uh, ranging from, uh, well, um, the, the First World War, um, but it's almost as if he is rattling off these bullet points that are going to be given in any good revision book. Uh, the Hodder um, is a perfect example of that. They really give it to you bite size, um, and, and that really is something that could help you there. Um, but that would give then, um, as I'm saying, this question has been designed so you can draw on different parts of knowledge. If you notice in the example that I've used, um, he tends to sort of mention quite a bit about Rasputin, okay? Um, and and there, there could be more said about the uh, the First World War and the military failures there of the Russian uh, army. However, as I said, these questions are really, there is, there's a correct way to answer them, not necessarily the perfect example I can give you to answer them. There's just the technique and that, that really is what history is about. You know, the, if you've got the, the, the evidence that you've built up in your head, then you can really give us a, um, a great discussion or rather a great um, case uh, to put in front to sort of give us evidence and to, to understand why something happened. Okay. Finally, uh, to make this easier, include specific details such as names, dates, events, organizations and activities. It shows you are writing strong and it shows, boy, you know your stuff. OK, so if certain little things stick in there, um, get them on the paper. I'd certainly advise that. OK. Always support your statements with examples where you find it possible. Always do that. And it, there's no, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong in writing. For example, um, uh, people dislike the influence Rasputin had because picture postcards were printed of him um, in compromising positions with the Tsarina. Okay, j j just, just to sort of give a, a quick example there, but I'd like to move on, which we will. So question 1C, now this will be a comparative question, okay? But what they really want you to do here is to recognise um, why there's two two different views okay so it's, it's kind of like that question you had with the interpretations they want you to realize that these two views are different right uh, but why are they different or how do sources a and b have different views okay um so that we're asking for the utility of source material and your own knowledge to discuss different viewpoints. It's an eight mark question and you must comment on both sources in each case, making reference to the content and the author. So why do sources A and B have different views about the strength of the white forces during the Civil War? This is worth eight marks. OK, so just to read out um, the two sources that I've used. This comes from Y. Kukushkin, 
an official communist historian, writing in his book, History of the USSR, published in 1981. And he writes, the Communist Party, led by Lenin, sent the best of its members to join the Red Army. By the end of 1918, Lenin had sent over 1,700,000 men to fight the whites. The Red Army was a formidable force, even so on every battlefront. Red Army units had to fight against an enemy who was better equipped, better trained and numer uh, numerically superior. The Red Army was composed of workers and peasants who were utterly devoted to the cause of the revolution. That was what ensured their victory. My apologies for the... the, the my, I haven't got my glasses on when I read this. I didn't think... Uh, I thought it would have come up bigger on the screen. Source B, then, comes from a school textbook by Philip Ingram. Russia and the USSR, 1905 to 1991, and this is published in 1997. Okay, the whites controlled the edges of the Russian Empire. This area was populated by many different nationalities, and they only obeyed orders and cooperated with the other whites when it suited them. The whites were made up of many different political parties who consistently argued and did not trust each other. Okay, let's go a little bit. Um, no, I tell you what, we'll look at the answer first, then I'll dissect it. it you, it'll make more sense this way. Okay, so our candidate has written, Sources A and B have different views about the strength of white forces during the Civil War. Okay, recognise that. Nothing groundbreaking, he's just repeated the question. Source A is the viewpoint of why Kuku Kin, a communist author who highlights the importance of the Red Army success by saying that the white forces were better equipped, better trained, and their army was much larger, larger in number. They faced the Red Army, which was made up of workers and peasants, not trained soldiers, but they had the advantage of being loyal and devoted to the aims and beliefs of the Bolsheviks. Source A is clearly very biased and is taken from a history of the USSR written by a communist historian in 1981 and was subject to censorship. Now, there's something there that may be a little bit unfair. I'll come back to that. But this contrasts with source B, which says that the white forces were dispersed along the edges of the Russian Empire. They were made up of many different nationalities and did not cooperate that well. These forces had different pol policies and aims and did not trust each other. Source B is the interpretation of the historian Philip Ingram, writing in a GCSE history textbook in 1997. Ingram would have researched this event and was writing with the benefit of hindsight, enabling him to produce a much reasoned and balanced interpretation. The circumstances under which both sources are produced explain why they differ so much in their interpretation of the strengths of the white forces during the Civil War. Source A is the official communist version of events which displays elements of bias, while source B is a balanced and more reflective interpretation of events. This is a very, well, this is a fine, fantastic answer, okay? And I think set in exam conditions, um, to write something like this, boy, you ain't got a social life, okay? However, you can do it. The one thing I did mention, which I do feel which is a little bit unfair here, um, is... If you were looking at, uh, I think, the way that this is worded here, an official communist historian, um, that can be quickly overlooked. But it does mean that we can really go into that kind of depth here just to make you think, boy, these um, attributes okay, of the source are written here for a reason. They are going to give you so many clues there. You have dates okay, in brackets or parentheses. Um, of the publishing date when they were released, okay? But this is also something that you can work on to say what this person. Can you see that it's a viewpoint from historians, yeah? Um, a communist historian, so you believed in the communist cause, okay? Um, there's a little indiscrepancy there. I mean, because I know that my class have studied America, then they would have could appreciate the uh, the collapse of communism and how communism would have still been very very strong in 1981. Um, however, when you, you you're looking at the period of 1905 to 1924, of course you don't get that sort of hindsight and reflection. So maybe you wouldn't be able to comment on that. But remember, draw on your strengths from certain things like that. There, you know, there, there are bonus clues or bonus points to be had by maybe getting, or, or uh, certainly there'll be helpful understanding points there. 
that'll help you answer this answer. Uh, okay, to help you answer this question, I'm sorry. So let's just have a look at a few more hints that I've noted. Hints for question 1C would be, look at the content, origin and purpose of both sources. I think I've used this again, but it, 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 it's great. It just reminds you, you can cop out. Uh, so content, what do the sources say? Origin, who said it? When did they say it? Okay, that's important. That's the attribution there. Okay, and purpose. Why was it said? Who was it said to and why? Is it biased? Okay, remember, it's viewpoint. So explain why the two sources have different views. The attributions provide the clues to help you identify the reasons for the different viewpoints that they will have on offer. Okay. Um, another example which you can find in the horror book is uh, how Lenin would write the October Revolution as opposed to how Trotsky would write uh, his view on what took place on the October Revolution. But that's just another inside um, glimpse of what may come up. I can't promise that. That's the end of video one. I'm trying to shoot through these. Thank you very, very much for listening. See you in the next one.